there's always so many memories that come back here and, and obviously being able to make some more memories uh, earlier this year in the spring uh, with the win, but and how special that was to celebrate in victory lane with the cup car. My dad was here, uh, so it was a pretty special thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, this track, um, you know, I always remember the first time we rolled in here, uh, we were just visiting and we met Ken Reagan. They got a Bandolero and raced uh, two nights later with it. And, and I, I guess, I mean, I've spent so much time, lived here uh, for years and, and knowing David and Reed and, and everyone's still in the sport. I think that's one of the things that I noticed so much with, with kids racing these days is that they stay in the sport. Right, like, even if they don't drive, they're still around one way or another. Um, whether it's in Legends cars or, or they started, or a lot of friends that started in quarter midgets in Connecticut with me, and they're s still in the sport. Uh, it's just kind of cool to see all that that come around and um, and the passion that that has grown um, from kids that want to be around race cars. It's really cool. So yeah, I still see that a, a lot. And and um, you know, with my son now, he's only five, so we're not really racing anything yet, but. We go out to the track and play around and see the other kids there and need to talk to them and all that. It's pretty cool. So um, what I realized already is that my kid doesn't listen to me and all the other kids do listen to me where to go on the racetrack. So go figure. I've, I already know nothing. <laughs> Steve Toronto, CBS Sports. Joey, this is the third year in a row that we've raced at Atlanta in July, but this is the first year now that we've held this race at night instead of in the daytime, considering what the heat has been at this time of year in Atlanta. How how relieved or how glad are drivers that this race is at night now? I think the fans should be just as relieved as the drivers are. Uh, I mean, it's hot, right? I mean, to ask somebody to be sitting up in those grandstands, you know, in the middle of the summer with the sun baking on them, I, that's just hard to ask people to do. Um, I'm not going to do that. I can't do that much. So... Uh, forget bringing kids out to you know to a race or something like that and you get out there in the sunburn so uh, this is much better um, to be able to do that um, at night a little bit cooler uh, cars always look cool at night anyways right? and it's always kind of a different feel uh, with night races and things like that so I think it's a great play I'm glad we're doing it and and it seems like just eyeballing the racetrack that it started to bleach out a little bit maybe getting some more character that it didn't have when the track was initially repaved. But since we're going to be racing at night, night racing means grip. So um, are you expecting that same level of grip that we've had over the first three races at this track? Or do you feel like it's going to lose maybe a fraction, if not a little more, of grip? I, I think it I mean, it should have less than what we raced in the spring. Even though that was the daytime, it was like 40 degrees outside. So it's still going to be 80 degrees or so when the sun's down. Uh, so track temp's still going to be quite a bit warmer than what we raced last time, which means it should be less grip out there. Um, you know, qualifying here in a few minutes, that's going to probably be pretty slick out there, I'd assume. Uh, so, hey, yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to say how much the track's changing because when we got here with the next-gen car, that was like the first time we were out there with these things, and, and it was like, ah. Uh, and then our cars got better. Well, did the track get better? The, car, the cars got better. Now, we're still making our cars better every time we come here, as the track's probably given up some grip. But I think the track temperature is going to be the biggest difference here. Yeah, I mean, you assume the wind's big, right, and it gets you in the playoffs and all that. But, yeah, you, you said it, right? You fast forward however many races it's been since we've been here. What's it been, about 15 or so? It's bigger than what we thought it would be, right? Uh, unfortunately, you hope it's not. <laughs> you hope it's the other way around. Um, but, you know, we're, what, 10th in points right now? And, you know, we'd have been probably in a decent spot to make the playoffs, I'm sure, still. But it's a lot more comfortable when you have a, a win and you know you're in the playoffs and you can focus in on some other things and, and, and trying to grow your team and get smarter and all those things. So, yeah, we're, we're not where we need to be, that's for sure. There's a lot of hard work going on right now to try to close the gap. And, you know, we're keep hustling and trying and <laughs> swinging the bat and doing everything we possibly can do, right? There's only so many things you can do, but work in the areas we're allowed to and, and keep trying to find something. And also, if you look at the, just the last three weeks, Nashville, Chicago, and here, before 2021, these tracks either weren't on the schedule or the configurations weren't on right. the schedule. So quite a big change for you guys just in the last couple of years. How challenging have things gotten for drivers 
as the schedule has evolved and even just, you know, not only just this three week period, but just what, what NASCAR is doing, what is done and what is looking to do? It's definitely gotten harder because you have a car that, that we don't have as well developed as the old car. We're going to tracks that are brand new and you're not giving us any practice. Right. And even when you have 50 minutes of practice, like, okay, like now you're not giving us practice <laughs> in comparison to what it used to be. It's not even close. Um, and, and really to be able to tune on your car and those type of things, right? Nashville, we got to tune on our cars some, but last week you don't, um, you kind of, you got what you got for the most part. Um, so it, it's definitely a lot harder to close the gap. Um, whether you're off from a driver or off as a, in a car, Either way, it's, it's really hard to close the gap because you just don't get the laps and, or you don't get the adjustments you want to make to your car to try to make it better um, or to really A, B something to see if it was better or not. Right? You got to come back 15 weeks later and change something and compare it to something that was 40 degrees outside. <laughs> yeah. Tell me if that was better. Yeah, right. I guess <laughs> way too many variables. Uh, so th that's the situation all these teams are in. Yep. All right, let's go to Jordan and then to Lee. It's kind of following up on that question. How do you assess what teams are running good and what teams you know are going to be tough to go through the playoffs if everything is changing kind of on a week-to-week -week basis because everything is different, everything is a challenge? Um, I mean, it was similar to this last year. I'd say, if anything, it's easier this year to tell who's going to be the, the hitters right now. Um, and, and, I mean, a lot of it's the same guys it's always been, <laughs> right? Like, you go back and look at it, it's, you know, the best team's best drivers are, are usually up front. Um, every now and again, you may have something kind of mix up or, or you may have a team that's fallen off the bandwagon for a little bit, but they usually figure it out. Um, they, I, I don't see it being much different. I mean, last year was almost harder to tell because there's so many winners and, and all that. Now this year seems like it's starting to, starting to see more common guys up front, but I mean, it's just, the thing is now, though, is that the whole team matters, right? Or before, if you had a fast car, you can get away with a slow pit stop. You can get away with a battery start every now and again because your car is fast enough to make it up. And then the top 10 looked almost the same every time. Now, you know, boy, if you're a fifth place car, but you have a 15th place pit stops all day, I mean, you're going to finish like 12th, right? <laughs> like, it's just what it is. Uh, so it's a lot different than it used to be. It's not as easy to make up the spots because the field's closer talk uh, in light of Chicago about what markets NASCAR should go to maybe expand to is there any tracks out there that you either existing tracks or markets or cities that you know you really like think that should be added to the, to the Cup Series schedule gosh um can't say I've thought about it a whole bunch I, I do like that we're branching out um and that weekend really I mean when you think of all the all the stuff that as an industry we had to go through throughout the you know, preparing for it, the track itself, <laughs> you know, the, the weather <laughs> that came on us last second. There's still a ton of people there, and, and, and it was a pretty good race. Uh, I guess to me, after seeing that, let's go anywhere. Like, it, it seems to be fine. Like, we have a, a system that works pretty well. Yeah, is there things we could adjust to the racetrack to make it a little better and a little safer? Absolutely. Um, but I do think overall for the first time out on a street course it wasn't in the rain <laughs> wasn't that bad too but overseas races you know whether it's in europe middle east wherever logistically speaking is, is that the thing first that you think could happen and, and two something you'd be in favor of in on the schedule someplace i think we can um you know and and, and listen you, you tell racers you're going racing somewhere they'll figure out how to get stuff there, right? Like it's, races are a different breed. I feel like you can put these people in any industry and they're gonna figure out ways to succeed. Um, and the, the deadline is, is here, right? It's not like when you're building a house and you say it's gonna be done at a certain time and, and three months later it can be done then and it's okay. No, they ha you have to be racing this weekend. You have to have the car ready. They figure out a way to make it happen. It's gonna be like that if, if that's the situation. We'll figure out how to do it. Um, I think it would be great to go overseas. I, I'd be interested in it. I think it'd be kind of fun. Um, I, I, from the few times that I have gone to other places, I, I do know a lot of people have interest in our sport. 
um, because they never get to see it, right? If you never get the chance to see something when it comes to your country, it's going to be a big deal, right? It's a big event. Uh, I believe it would be a huge event if we went somewhere in a different country that was far away from here somewhere. <laughs> All right, we have time for two more questions. We're going to go to Lee and then right here in the middle. Uh, Jeff, Jeff Watkins, Toyota's Race Week. Uh, been kind of asking the drivers just kind of about physical fitness and stuff. Uh, how important to you is it to stay physically fit as a driver, and how does it help? Yeah, I think, it, I think it's important for a few reasons, right? One, you know, you, you want to try to compete or, or train in the – the same conditions you're competing in, um, right? So you want to be where it's hot, right? It's really hot in our race cars right now. Your heart rate's elevated at a, uh, a pretty high level the whole time. You mentally have to be there. I think the more physically fit you are and ready for those situations, the more mentally engaged you can be. Um, just like any other sport, it's, it's a mental game, right? And, and, and if you can't physically be there, you're mentally off in some la la land, right? And you're going to miss the details, and you're going to lose. Um, so I believe, you know, physically being there, being focused in, and being able to to really accomplish a task, the whole race is important, right? Because our most important moments are at the end of the race, right? That's that's when the pay window opens up. Uh, you have to be the most ready at that moment. Catch fence or catch fence. Um, you've won twice at your home track, and is there any better feeling than that? I mean, other than winning the championship, you know, is there a better feeling at just winning a specific race someplace? Um, outside of Daytona, I would assume Indy in a championship race or getting yourself into the championship four somehow in some big moment, I, that is the biggest win you can have outside of those, for sure. Um, winning at your home track is just, it's, it's special for a lot of reasons. There's a lot of memories there, for one, but it's the people that are there with you more times than not, right? It's like your family's there, your friends are there. Like, people don't get to go to every single race, and you celebrate with them in victory lane. Like, that is just the coolest moment. Uh, and they're probably different for others. I, I don't know. But for me, Loudon is, is always going to hold a special place in my heart for that reason. Um, but you know, cause I, like I always say, I st watched my first cup race here. I started my first cup race. We won our first cup race. Like it's a special place, um, for, for me and winning there is definitely, you know, fourth or fifth on the, on the list of, of tracks you want to win at. Probably not like that for everyone at Loudoun, but for me, it definitely is. And it has it become increasingly difficult to pass with this car there. Or, you know, how is this car, how's the dynamic at that track changed with this car? Um, I don't know if it's a whole bunch different than the old car was. Um, it's hard to pass. It's, bottom line, it's hard to pass. That's, it's racing, though. That's what racing is. Uh, it's challenging. And as our cars just run the same speed, yeah, it's going to be hard to pass. Right? Like, we used to have cars that were more separated. Now, everybody's within a couple tenths of a second, and... Dirty air is going to be more than that. It's just it's going to slow you down more than two tenths of a second, so you're going to get stuck. Uh, and that just means qualifying, execution of the race. Um, good thing is tires fall off a fair amount at Loudon, so there's there's opportunity for strategy there uh, with some things. And um, we've seen that track get fairly wide, where some cars can run you know on the yellow line or even below it. Some run the third lane, that third scene way up there. It's gotten pretty racy, but it's still a challenging place to pass, but everywhere is, though. 